Hi guys, it's Miss Caitlin and I'm here to give you another fall daily draw. So today is day number three and we are going to be creating a cornucopia. Now for our daily draw, you can see here, I have it all filled in with some watercolor, but we're also gonna be doing some shading with some water soluble markers at the beginning before we even fill it all in with the watercolor. But most importantly, we need to know how to draw this. So let's go ahead and get our paper ready. So you are going to need a piece of paper. I recommend something that's gonna be sturdy for watercolors, of course, but if you're not using watercolor for today's daily draw, that's all right. You could just use whatever you have um, as far as paper goes. Uh, whatever paper it is you are using, make sure that you turn it vertical up and down, long ways. And let's start by writing in our number at the top. Now I'm gonna be using Sharpie just so that you can see, but I want you to do all of this in pencil today, okay? All right, so at the top, let's go ahead and write in a box for our number. There we go. All right, so again, we're just gonna write the number three. Make sure it's nice and big. Now you can make this number as fancy as you like. It's really up to you. I'm gonna leave it like that for now. Now for the cornucopia, usually when we see a cornucopia, it's kind of laying on its side, but this one is going to be facing upwards. So let's start by drawing in where all of the fruit and food is going to go. So right here, I want us to draw in kind of like this long, not exactly a U shape, but basically a long curved line. So go ahead and take your pencil and draw a big curved line. You can see it's ever so slightly curved. It's not exactly a U because it's so big, but it's big and curved. Then I want you to draw a curved line and a curved line on either side. And now we're gonna start constructing that main body of the cornucopia. Now to do this, some of this cornucopia is kind of, uh, it's in perspective a little bit. So some of it's going to look smaller as it gets farther away from us and some of it's going to be bigger. So what I want you to do is start right here. This is going to be kind of the top as it leads towards the back. You're gonna draw a curved line, like a U. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna draw a really big U shape and we want it to connect not only this point here, but all the way over and connect back to that curved line. So go ahead and take your pencil, draw that big curved line all the way down, around and up. So right now it almost kind of, look, kind of looks like a horn, but it's cornucopia. So the food that we're gonna put inside today, I'm going to put grapes and two squash. I'm gonna put a pumpkin and just a regular gourd. But you can feel free to add in whatever kind of foods you want. You could put corn, um, you could put any of your favorite vegetables or fruits that you enjoy. Now, if you're gonna add the same ones as I did, I'm going to add grapes. Now, grapes can sometimes be a little challenging to draw just because we have to think about, you know, how all of those different circles, the shape of the grape overlap. So first, I'm gonna start right about here. I'm just gonna draw in a grape. <laughs> I'll draw in another grape. And you can see, as I draw one in, I kinda want some of that circle to, I want it to overlap because grapes, they're all in a bunch, right? So maybe sometimes I'm not making a circle. Maybe sometimes I'm making like a C shape. And then I can also kind of draw in circles there or curved lines and just have a lot of fun drawing in different grapes. Now you can of course draw grapes kind of coming over the edge here. Just make sure you erase any lines that kind of go through them. So I'll mark that right now orange marker, just so that we all remember. Erase any lines from your cornucopia that go through your fruit or your vegetable. So I'm just gonna keep drawing grapes. Again, you want them to look like they're pretty round and it's a lot of thinking about overlapping. So if you want a grape to overlap another one, maybe just draw it as a curve. And I have a grape that's kind of falling off the side here. Maybe some of them have spilled out from the cornucopia. Just remember, anything that is overlapping the grape like this, any parts of that cornucopia, can't see through a grape. So you're gonna have to erase those lines. Okay. All right, I'm pretty happy with how many grapes I have there. I think I'm gonna go ahead and move on into some other parts of the 
cornucopia, starting with one of the gourds. So if you look on my example, I have this pretty big green gourd that's going on right here. So I'm gonna draw that. It's almost the shape of a pear too, if you've ever drawn a pear before. I'm gonna start right here, right on the side of the cornucopia. I am going to draw a curved line up. And then I'll do a wavy line up. So it's almost like I'm making this really wavy line that's coming up that way. We're gonna curve around and do wavy line back down. Okay, now at the top, you need to draw a stem. So go ahead and draw a stem at the top of the gourd. And there we have the gourd. Next, we're gonna draw the pumpkin. So for the pumpkin, it's gonna be behind our grapes and our gourd here. So again, we're kind of thinking how, you know, the grapes are overlapping the gourd and the gourd is overlapping the pumpkin. So we don't wanna see the entire pumpkin. We're only gonna see parts of it, mostly the top. So I'm gonna start on this side and I'm going to draw a curved line and another curved line. That second curved line, it kind of comes down and touches that grape that's falling off the side. Pumpkins also have stems. So draw two lines up and connect. Now, if you wanna be fancy, you could also add in some of those kinds of vines that come off from pumpkins. So you can feel free to add in some wavy and curly lines coming out from your pumpkin, maybe goes behind the gourd, and you could even add little leaves. All along the sides, but that's gonna be up to you. Totally optional. If you want to add more than what we've done here, please feel free. I think that would be super fun. You could even have other kinds of fruits and vegetables that have spilled out perhaps. All right, so there we go. Now we're gonna add in the different lines of the gourd and the pumpkin uh, with some color, with markers. So at this point, you can go ahead and like pause and you can outline everything in a Sharpie if you so desire. Otherwise, I'm gonna jump right into the marker step. Now for this, I'm gonna go ahead and take some markers. I have them over here off to the side. Crayola markers are water soluble. That means when you put water on top of them, they're going to bleed a little bit. They're going to blend away. Uh, and we want that because we're gonna be using kind of a combination of these and watercolor to create some shading. So this is gonna be pretty fast and easy. Let's start with our cornucopia, the main deal. I'm gonna take a brown marker and I am first going to outline the top here with this brown marker. Let's get right underneath the grapes. Then I'll also add a little bit of the brown marker underneath those curved lines that we had made on either side, just to kind of help with the shading and the roundness of the cornucopia. Then cornucopias are usually, um, they look like they're made out of wicker. Sometimes, not always. So what we wanna do is we wanna add some of that texture here. So I'm gonna take my marker, I'm gonna add curved line, curved line, curved line. And they're gonna get smaller as I reach towards the back of the cornucopia. Same thing on the right side. I'm gonna do curved line, curved line, curved line, curved line. And we'll get smaller and smaller as they reach back. Now you could also use your brown marker at this time if you would like to outline the stems of your different fruits and vegetables that have stems. For me, that's gonna be this gourd here and the pumpkin. You could even add in some lines for texture if you want. As for the grapes now, I'm kind of sticking to the color scheme um, where I'm using greens, oranges, browns, and yellows, but I'm gonna break from that color scheme just a second because I need an analogous color to shade for the grapes. So I'm gonna use a purple marker to shade, and this is what we're going to do. You're going to take your purple marker, first decide where you want all the shadows to be. I want all of my shadows to be on the right side. So I'm gonna take this purple marker and I'm just gonna draw little C shapes and shadows onto the right side of each grape. Now, don't worry, these grapes are still gonna be red, but we're using the purple marker right now, this water-soluble marker, 
to help create the shadow for later. The grapes are still going to end up being red, but this is a little bit of color theory that we're considering here. Now again, you're going to see just those uh, Sharpie lines through these grapes here because I made this picture in Sharpie so I can't erase as well as you can. Try not to add too much of this purple either because again, we want red grapes, not purple grapes. All right. Oh, I got these two grapes down here. Almost missed them. Okay, for the pumpkin, I'm gonna take an orange marker and I'm just gonna draw some of those curved lines onto the pumpkin to give it that pumpkin texture. My outline around the gourd, and there we go. Okay, so that pumpkin is all done. And now for the gourd, I am going to take a green and kind of do the same thing. So first I'm gonna outline the inside. And then I'll do some lines down just to kind of give it that texture. You could also, with the same green, fill in your leaves. Now, we're not gonna be putting any watercolor on the leaves since they're kind of small, so you can feel free to just use the marker and fill them in. If you wanna use a different green for this part, please feel free. It's up to you. It's your daily draw after all. As well, if you ever want to make something even more fancy in your daily draw, I always encourage you to exercise that creativity. So now that's all we needed the markers for, we're going to go ahead and break out the watercolor. Now, this part's going to go pretty fast because all these areas that we're filling in are pretty big, besides for the grapes, of course. So I'm going to be using this medium brush since a lot of the spaces are kind of a medium size. I have my water bucket off to the side here. I'm just going to take my brush, get it nice and wet. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of match the color that I used with marker, with exception of the grapes. So let's start with our pumpkin, for example. For the pumpkin, I don't want us to go in with an orange. I actually want you to get your brush nice and wet, pick up yellow, and fill in the pumpkin with yellow. Now what you're going to notice happening with your watercolor and the marker happening here is that the marker is going to start to blend a little bit into the watercolor and we actually want that today. It's going to create this really interesting texture and this really interesting sort of look. Now if you do want your pumpkin to be a little bit more on the like very deep orange side, of course go in there with like maybe a little bit of light orange or yellow orange. I would put it maybe towards the bottom of the pumpkin. So that way at least it looks like it's shaded. But that can be up to you. Same thing for our gourd. I don't want you to go in with a green. I actually want you to go again in with yellow and fill in that gourd with the yellow. Again, what you're gonna notice is that it's going to pick up the color from that water soluble marker, from that marker that blends away with water. And it's going to help you create a green on your paper. In fact, sometimes, <laughs> this is going to sound very silly, but in college, since a lot of students can be kind of strapped for money and we needed some really nice watercolors, one of my college professors actually suggested to us just buy a set of Crayola markers. You water them down and they're perfect. They act just like watercolor brushes or watercolor pens and pencils. He was kind of right. So I always think of um, that professor and that class whenever I do this kind of technique. If you do wanna add some shading, of course go in there with maybe a little bit of green, kind of work on the bottom of the gourd if you want that to just kind of stand out even more, if you want some of that contrast. All right, onto the grapes. So for this part, you can switch to a smaller brush if you'd like to, but we're gonna get our brush nice and wet, wipe off any extra water, pick up red. Now, my red watercolor happens to be very intense, so 
I'm gonna take a little bit of that red and I'm going to carefully paint in all of my grapes. Now I recommend you paint in one grape at a time. So that way your purple doesn't completely get blended away. We wanna keep some of it there so it looks like it's shaded. So you can see, even though we put purple, it's now acting more like sort of like a red violet or dark red, along with this watercolor here. And that way we're still sticking to our color scheme today, even though we broke away from it for just a second with that purple marker. It was all so that we could get the perfect shadow. Of course, you can kind of fiddle with this back and forth for a while. If you really want to get in there, you could um, like really blend that marker and the shadows if you like. If you want to do green grapes, I encourage you to. I think those would still look really cool if you had like a mixture of green and red grapes. Last but not least, the cornucopia, which I specifically saved for last because it is our darkest color. So we're going to go ahead and do this with some brown to begin with, and then we might sneak in a little bit of orange at the end. So go ahead and get your brush nice and wet, pick up some brown, and go ahead and fill in the cornucopia. Now again, I've added shading onto mine, so I'm going to make sure the right side of my cornucopia is darker than the left side. So I'm probably gonna start concentrating a lot of that color for the cornucopia on the right side first. And again, you're gonna notice that brown marker we put down, it starts to blend away just a little bit, but not so much that we lose that texture that we did. Now, you can still put brown, of course, on the other side, onto this left side here, but if you would really like to kind of bump up that contrast even more, you could switch over to a yellow-orange or even a yellow and fill in the rest of the cornucopia with that. That's going to do one of two things. One, it's going to make your picture more interesting. Two, it's going to give you a really excellent uh, contrast of your colors and just make it very vibrant. Because these colors are pretty similar, but they're just different enough that they look interesting together. And then don't forget to fill in the teeny tiny part of the back of the cornucopia. And there we have it. Day three, all done. Oh, except one thing. I bet you probably noticed it before I did. The stems, what are we to do? So let's go ahead and take our small brush, a little bit of brown, fill in those stems. And then we can call this day three done. Of course, you can add in a background if you like. Again, fill in any extra things that you've added. Um, I do want to see what you've created, so make sure that you comment with your day three daily draw down in the comments, okay? Have a great rest of your day, and we will see you again tomorrow. Bye!